Oregon State and Washington State have found themselves in a precarious position amid the recent wave of college football conference realignment. As powerhouses like Texas and Oklahoma move to the SEC and the rest of the Pac-12 teams reshuffle into more lucrative and high-profile conferences, these two schools are facing significant challenges. The Pac-12's instability has left Oregon State and Washington State without a clear path forward creating uncertainty around their athletic program's futures. This exclusion from major conferences not only impacts their ability to attract top talent, but also jeopardizes their financial stability, as broadcast revenue and sponsorship opportunities are likely to dwindle. Moreover, the lack of competitive scheduling could affect team morale, fan engagement, and recruiting options, making it harder for these schools to maintain their storied football traditions and competitive edge. The need to find a new conference home that offers both visibility and financial viability is now more pressing than ever for the Cougs and the Beavs. But maybe even more important to each team's administration, players, and fan base is revenge. As the rest of the Pac-12 has moved on to seemingly greener pastures, the two remaining schools will undoubtedly carry one common goal, making everyone regret their decision to leave. In this last ever dynasty in NCAA Football 14, join me as we rebuild not one, but two schools, restructuring their rosters, finding a new conference home, and bringing both schools to glory in the only place that matters in college football these days, the college football playoff. So let's meet each team. In this version of our alternate reality, Transfers have decimated the rosters of both programs and have led each team to decide to virtually start from scratch. That means that each team's roster is comprised almost exclusively of walk-on players with just one or two notable talents remaining. The offense of Oregon State will be led by the junior quarterback Cordell Carroll, that one's going to be a little bit tricky to say, but we're not going to be saying it that often because he's dookie. 63 overall for the quarterback, 60 speed, so he's going to be sitting in the pocket, but the problem is he's not very good. 83 throw power is probably his most important stat, but the 66 throw accuracy means that ball might be going a long ways downfield, but it doesn't mean that it's going towards any player. At running back, the first stringer is the 45 overall freshman, Steven Mark. He's not the quickest and he's not the strongest. 74 speed and 53 strength. He's got a little bit of an acceleration. He doesn't really have any skill moves to work with, so to say but at least he's a body to fill the position. It is important to note as we move to the wide receivers that Oregon State is going to be running a very, very run-heavy focused pro-style offense. So while we have some wide receiver talent, they're not going to see the ball as much as they would probably like. Although looking at the depth chart, maybe they would like it so that they don't get exposed constantly. At 65 overall and six foot three, the freshman Osita Salam is the fastest player on the team. He also conveniently is one of the weakest, but should he get free and get downfield, there's a chance that every once in a while we could see the big plays. We just have to hope that it's a perfect football because his catching leaves a lot to be desired. Our second best wideout is the 62 overall, five foot 10 freshman, Junior Franklin Jr. We'll probably just call him Junior. And while he has a little bit of speed and he's a little bit stronger than Osita, he still leaves a lot to be desired. And is part of the reason why we are not going to be throwing the ball a whole lot, at least in these early seasons. The crown jewel of the offensive line is one of the only good players on the team at 71 overall. It's the junior Brandon Kafu. We're going to hope that the right guard is able to hold things down for us or at least give us a chance to do something on offense because it's going to be a struggle all season long. On the defensive side of the ball, we will be running a 4-3. While it might not fit our personnel at the moment, it's something that we are going to build our team into. We will mold the defense to work with it. But these first couple of seasons are going to be rough. Left end is a 45 overall. The right end is a 56 overall. And a defensive tackle, we've got another 46 and a 47 overall. For the linebackers, it really isn't much better, with the notable exception of Jamil Thomas, who is a 56 overall, so a step above the rest of his defensive front seven. But still, nothing that 
any serious team is going to have to worry about. As a whole, the defensive backs are also pretty bad for the Beavers, with the notable exception of Ryan Sandy, the six foot three freshman free safety, who is 73 overall, the highest that we have on the roster, 82 speed, 66 strength means maybe he won't be the worst. He's got decent acceleration and agility and an impressively high zone coverage rating of 79, which on this team is cream of the crop. So while the Beavers will be looking to damn things up on both sides of the line, committing to stopping the run on defense and committing to the run on offense, it's Washington State that will be going back to their roots with the air raid offense. Now, just like Oregon State's defense is something that we're going to have to find players to mold into the system that we're trying to look for, it's going to be the same with Washington State's offense. The quarterback, six foot one junior Xavier Baker, is only 56 overall. The pocket passer has a 72 throw power and a 66 throw accuracy. So at this stage, he's not going to be throwing bombs. And even though short crossing routes might be a little bit difficult, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to ram our head against the door trying. The 65 overall running back Cameron Hall probably won't be getting the rock too many times this season. But if he can prove himself to be a good receiving back, then he might be able to open up some wrinkles for the offense. At the receiver position, we have a little bit of speed with the top two on the depth chart. 89 speed for the 64 overall wide receiver Terry Peterson will combine nicely with the 85 speed of Mo Tuggle, the freshman wide receiver. He's six foot five, but only 59 overall. So he's quick, he's tall, but that's about all he's got going for him aside from the name. Our tight ends are basically worthless as is the rest of the offensive line who don't crack 50 overall. So Xavier's gonna have a hard time sitting in the pocket and making those throws, uh, which I guess it's good that he doesn't have great throw power because he's not gonna have the time for his receivers to get deep, even if they are speedy. Washington State will be running for the time being a 3-3-5, and that's good news because the defensive line also does not crack 50 overall, but there is a little bit of linebacker depth. We've got Roderick Ball at 66 overall, Danny Colon at 64, and Quinn Clements at 60 overall, which is honestly for this team pretty high. For most of the defensive backs, they don't have anything going for them except for speed, with the rare exception of the best player on the defense and heck, the best player on the team, the 76 overall junior, Avery Fentress. He's tied for fastest on the team. He's got great acceleration, horrible awareness, but hopefully that doesn't hurt us too much. 89 man coverage and 91 zone means that his awareness is low, but once he figures out what's going on, he's gonna stick to his man like glue. And I am praying that he is able to get some takeaways for us this season, maybe even score some points because just like Oregon State, I think the Cougs are gonna struggle to score all season long. Now, when I said that Fentress was the best player on the team, I'm actually lying to you. It's actually the fullback turned kicker, Nick Hobberer. The story in the locker room is that he got mad at practice one day, kicked a water bottle, and from 50 yards out, sent it straight through the uprights. So at 82 overall as a kicker, he's going to be taking over all of the kicking duties, which makes you really feel bad for the guys who are on scholarship in those kicking positions. But, you know, we got to play the best man available, and it just happens to be Nick. Coaching for Oregon State is the young and unproven former running back, Willie Met. His background is the reason why everything important that's going to happen on both sides of the ball is going to start in the trenches. And how can you not trust a man who has a neck like that? Maybe I should say a lack of a neck. Out in Pullman, coaching for the Cougs is Paul Luce, who couldn't be more of an opposite of Willie if he tried. Paul, being almost twice as old as Willie, has none of the experience as he has never coached football outside of Pee Wee. Why Wazoo was willing to take the risk on him, who knows, but Paul's got the job and we're gonna see what he can do with it. Will either of these teams be able to reach glory before EA's College Football 25 come out? That's hard to say, but with the ghost of the former Conference of Champions in our corner, we're gonna do our best. How's it going, goons? It has been eons since we last met and I'd like to apologize for abandoning you guys. A little thing called life got in the way and a lot has been happening that has just prevented me from having the time to sit down and record. So I apologize that we were never able to truly finish the Grey Boys Dynasty, but I'm back now. I'm gearing up, getting the football mind ready for the new college football game because I am so excited for that to come out in less than two months. 
Now we're gonna try to get this franchise filmed, recorded, edited, and finished before that game comes out. So I need you guys to help me stay accountable on that by of course, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Truth be told, the better this series does, the easier it's going to be for me to find excuses from other things in my life to come and sit down and record these episodes. Now, because I haven't been playing this game in, gosh, what is it, over a year? Not only are the teams going to be bad, but I'm going to be bad as well. So I'm going to apologize in advance for all the missed wide open receivers that are there, or all the awful play calls. Now, because we're going to be following two different teams at the same time, the videos aren't going to be quite as in-depth as we're going to have twice as much to get through in the same amount of time. But I'm excited to get this one underway. We'll change up who we start with first in each episode, but we're going to be starting with Oregon State in this first episode and ignore the fact that they are number 25. That's as low as I could get them with the Dynasty tool, uh, but be assured we're going to be dropping really quick this first season. We are going to be using Fang's recruiting overall with the new faces, which is really cool. So we'll go ahead and go start checking out some prospects and start filling up this recruiting board. Because of the shortened time frame of this series, I'm not going to really limit who we are and are not allowed to recruit. You know, sometimes I would say maybe we can't do a five-star player until we get into a bigger conference. But if we can somehow convince a five-star guy to come play for us in the pack two, then good for him. He's more than welcome to come join us. In this day and age of NIL and with the NVIDIA founder being an alumnus of Oregon State, it only makes sense that every once in a while, maybe we could get on the phone with Jensen and somehow get him to donate a few dollars our way to maybe buy a player. So we'll just go ahead and start scouting and I'm starting from level one. So it's going to be a while before we can fully understand everybody, but we'll see. Maybe we can find some early gems or what we think could be gems. I don't think the Fang recruiting overhaul was out when we were last making videos. So things are different. And I know that it's very cool. There's a lot bigger, uh, you know, gem and bust opportunities, but we'll see what we can find early on. You know, if we could pull a guy like Kelvin Anderson at 84 overall at the linebacker position, that Oregon State run defense would start to be stout. 98 acceleration. It's pretty quick. Decent zone coverage. Good hit power. He's got A pursuit, B speed, B tackle. It looks like he could be good. Now, early on for the recruiting of both teams, we're basically looking at getting bodies in the door, replacing our walk-ons, and just trying to raise our floor. We can worry about getting the ceiling that will get us, you know, up towards the college football playoff later. But until we get to a team that can, you know, comfortably run the football or pass the football or even tackle the opposing team, we just need to get new bodies in and replace the old. Likewise, because of that, we're not going to bother redshirting anybody because almost everybody on the team is either going to be playing immediately because they will make an impact or they're not going to be around for very long. We're also not going to have very impressive schedules for a while. Uh, you know, kind of we're just trying to play any team that's going to take us. And that does mean that we're going to play a lot of FCF teams. And gosh, thank goodness for college football revamped in this team for creating the dynasty tool, allowing us to swap teams because we're going to be able to swap out a couple of FCS teams here every, every once in a while throughout the season. We're going to open up on the road at San Diego State, maybe a future conference member as we look at the Mountain West for potential expansion, or maybe we try to absorb them, play on the road at... Uh, our nemesis, a Big Ten team. Yeah, screw the Big Ten, we say here at, in Corvallis. Uh, Illinois on the road. And we continue on the road. Two bye weeks early. We will try to go and, well, maybe beat a team from a conference that has added Cal and Stanford in Duke in the ACC. Then we've got a, our first home game at Reister against App State. The Mountaineers have come from, you know, the depths of hell, it seems like, and have become just a seriously respectable FBS program from where they once were as an FCS team, where it kind of feels like we are at right now. We're going to take a lot of work to get to where we need to be, but we do have a lot better resources than most teams would. We will then host FCS Central. We got Missouri State. We've got Montana, North Dakota State, and Eastern Washington. And a fun goon fact for you guys. Gosh, that doesn't sound right these days. Uh, I, I visited Eastern Washington. There was a small chance that I was going to go to school there. Didn't end up happening, but that's it's a fun goon fact nonetheless. Now, because of the way that NCAA 14 works, 
Uh, we did have to keep four teams in a conference. I could have just made the Pac-12 just a bunch of random teams and put two independents with Oregon State and Washington State. Uh, but instead, I just, you know, kind of absorbed Boise State, Nevada, kind of the two closest teams to both of us. Uh, we just kind of think of it as like a scheduling agreement, we'll say. Uh, we still do have the Civil War. We've got our, I guess, protected rivalry with the Ducks this year at Racer. And then we will play Washington State at home as well in what will be... I don't even know. We got to think of a rivalry name for this game because not only is it to see who is the best of the pack two for the Tupac, depending on who you ask, but it could in the future become an annual matchup of two of the best teams in college football. Now for Washington State, the scouting, the depth chart, all that is going to be very similar these first couple of seasons as we try to fill up our rosters and start to... Uh, diverge into each specific team's offensive and defensive philosophies. But man, how great would it be to pick up a guy like Kelvin Anderson, the now 87 overall outside linebacker. That's a guy that we would love to have. There's almost no chance. He's pretty high lock, but you know, we got to look at these guys. Uh, never mind. He's the number three outside linebacker. That's not going to happen. I thought there was something else, but uh, hey, you never know. We're still going to give him points. For Washington State, it's going to be, uh, again, a very similar schedule with a lot of FCS teams. We'll have Nevada, Boise State, and Oregon State. But then uh, what else do we pick up? We've got Duke, which is a common opponent, surprisingly enough. There is uh, Auburn at home. Somehow we've convinced them to come play us, which is a miracle. North Dakota State, the Citadel, Eastern Washington on the road at Maryland. We host Montana, Nevada. We go to Boise. And then we will host Washington in the Apple Cup. And that one, oh man. Oh, we're going to want to kill those dogs. And that's not just me as a Ducks fan talking. That's me as, uh, you know, a real Washington State fan. Of course, then we'll finish the season on the road at Oregon State. Uh, it could be to crown whoever wins the Pac-12. But honestly, Nevada and Boise State uh, are probably going to be the ones winning our conference. Which hurts to think about, but it's just the case. Now, due to time constraints and trying not to keep these episodes at like an hour long each on this first one, we are going to just be playing Oregon State's first game of the season. So let's advance into the regular season and let's finally get this dynasty in our last dynasty ever in NCAA 14 underway. And great news to begin. Uh, who knows what it looks like for Washington State. Actually, I guess I can look for both sides. Just a half a million recruits ready to visit. And because we're just looking at guys who are wanting to come play, it looks like we are going to be able to start signing guys early and then maybe just spend the rest of the season just going after a couple of extra signees that maybe we don't think we have a chance to get, but because we can just dump full points into them for a long time, maybe we're able to snag a recruiter to every season that really just helps us, again, raise that floor. And right away, here's the conflict of interest and in where I have to remain partial as the one controlling this dynasty we've got jake bean the 73 we've got jake bean the six foot three 281 pound center coming out of parkway california and it is a dead heat at the moment between us and wazoo on who's gonna pick him up we have to give him full points probably on both sides because there's not going to be any collusion as far as i care about um, let's go ahead and scout him, see where he is. He's a 56 overall. He goes up to a 59. And again, you might think that's awful, but compared to what we have, so many guys in the mid to low 40s on both sides of the line on both teams, that is something that is huge for us to try to pick up. We're also just going to be setting up visits. So on some of these, I want to get them early in the season. I don't think it makes sense to wait late if it's somebody that we can really fight for. Jake Bean, however, because it's going to be a battle, we're going to send him to that game against Washington State. It would be beautiful to pick up a win if you're Oregon State with a guy who they're record recruiting and show him a loss on the other side and say, hey, look, come play for us. Uh, you know, you don't have to live out in the Palouse. You get to live in the Willamette Valley. It's, it's just more beautiful. But then... We just have to hope that we don't lose because otherwise the Washington State head coach, Paul's going to be walking over across the sideline and being like, hey, dude, could have seen this the whole way. You just come play for us. And then it turns into like an anti-visit and an extra visit for Washington State. So we've got to be careful, but you also, you, you got to risk it. 
Now, for everybody else for the Oregon State, uh, you know, trying to set their visits, basically just going for complimentary visits where possible, trying to avoid, uh, you know, negative visits and then stacking them early in the season against FCS teams. Uh, so it, we don't have to wait till like week four for that to happen as opposed to just going straight against Appalachian State. But I just think that we have a better chance. And again, apologies if you are from a different region, you say Appalachian di differently. Appalachian, yeah, it's Appalachian to me, so... You're going to have to hear that for a whole episode coming up soon, but you'll, you'll just have to deal with it. Washington State actually has a higher amount of guys ready to visit coming into this season than Oregon State did. So we are going to just be stacked with visits early in the season. And uh, who knows? I Again, I haven't played this game in a while, so uh, my recruiting strategies are a little bit out of whack, but that's how we're going to do it. We're going to stack these up and then we're going to just get into the first game with Oregon State. And you can already see after just simming through the first bye week that both teams had, uh, well, Oregon State's dropped out of the rankings. So that will be the first and last time that we see that for probably a season, maybe two, maybe three. And we have to go on the road now to San Diego State. We're a 39 overall. This is the first time that I've seen that. 81 for the Aztecs. Oh, this is going to be a brutal, brutal beatdown. Boy, has it been a long time since I have played this game. I am excited. I hope you guys are as well. Snapdragon Stadium is the site for the first game back as Oregon State takes on San Diego State. We are going to go tails, never fails, and we're going to build the dam. We win the toss. I'm just going to elect to receive. I want to see what the offense can do right away. And with our speedster back deep to return, it is going to be the start of the pack two and oh my gosh the acceleration is abysmal maybe should have taken the touchback but we get out just past the 25 yard line there's willie met coaching his first game at oregon state and we'll see what young willie can do with these beavers we're gonna open it up on the ground hanging handing it off and marcus just met in the backfield steven just dead loss of four second and 14 i think we're gonna see a lot of that this game Probably going to have to air this one out early with Carroll, but we'll see what we can do as we go with the counter. A little bit of space for Stephen Mark, and he gets two yards. That's not enough to pick up the loss, and it's third long. Exactly what this team didn't want to do is we are in a tough spot early with a bad quarterback. Pressure is coming. Just got to get rid of it. Oh, my gosh. The accuracy is absolutely terrible. Well, and it's a walk-on starting in his first game on the road, so maybe that's about what you would expect. Not a great punt. Marsh maybe can just tattoo him. No, fair catch. They were scared. Is uh, Well, now the defense is... Uh, I don't think much is going to go well here. Going to be running a lot of different schemes, starting with some man coverage just to see what works. They're going to step back, look into pass, and quarterback scrambling. We almost had the sack. Could he fumble? No, he's bouncing off everybody, and he gets eight yards on the scramble. Jalen Maiden just, man, putting up work. I thought we had a really good chance there to get him down, but it's just not the case. Is we're going to just play these safeties. Harvey stepping up. Carter, what can we do? They're going to run it. It's a counter, and there is great blocking and all the room in the world to run. As San Diego State's down the sideline, inside the 20, down to the 15, just like that. Darius De Los Reyes. I, I couldn't read that quick enough. Uh, well, gosh, one carry and he is gone inside the red zone for the Aztecs. Tried to bring pressure on that one and it did not work. This feels like it's going to be another run. We're calling it a run to the right and he goes up the middle and we're there to stuff it. I don't know if that's skill or if we just got in the way. But, oh, we got some glitches in the back of the end zone there and it's going to be tough. On Salam here, second and 10. And it looks like man in motion. They're going to probably run this one. We're just going to go inside. It's a triple option. Quarterback keeps it. Yeah, man, he was dancing his way inside the 10. Had all the choice in the world of where he wanted to go. And just like that, we are down a touchdown just a couple of minutes into this one. You're kidding yourself if you thought that was going to go any other way. As Osita Salam back to return his second kickoff of the game. Again, once he gets going, maybe he's a little bit quick, but that acceleration is pretty brutal. So it's going to be first down inside the 20. See what Steven Mark can do, handing it off up the middle. Offensive line actually gets a good hold, and we are positive on, on the yards for the game. A nine-yard carry. You know, my mom always said not to trust a man with two first names, but in this case, I think that we can do that as we're going to hand the ball off to him again on the counter. Mark, plenty of space to work with, and we've picked up a first down. There is hope in the air here in San Diego. 
Now, I'm not going to lie. I think that hope is going to be gone almost immediately. We're going to look at it, throw a screen here. And, well, we, we completed it, but Eric Novak uh, immediately swallowed up. Maybe I should have gone to the wide receiver on the mid screen there, but it's a loss of seven. So just like that, second and 17, Novak in. We're going to hand it off to him. Steven Mark already a little bit too tired. That one's a gain of one. Not sure I really, really call it that. Maybe a half yard at best. And it's Carroll with five wide. Looking to pass on third and a mile. The pressure is coming. We're going to try to sit in the pocket. It's a fumble scooped up by Bromley. But, man, Cordell Carroll just got obliterated. Loss of 11. It's fourth and 30. Good news is these games are going to go pretty quick. We're going to see if we can just get this one bouncing along the ground. Marsh gets uh, just absolutely obliterated. Man, look at how much space Davis still has here. He picks it up on the return, and he's still going to get across midfield. Cam Davis with the 23-yard return. And you know, that is after letting it bounce for a little bit. I'm expecting a run on this first down. The run was so successful that first drive. Just going to overload the side. It's an option, and we hit the quarterback in the backfield, but he holds on to it. We're going to take him down before he scores, but still picks up seven. We have shown no reason that San Diego State can't just uh, run the football on us. So we're going to bring pressure and hope to stop him this time. Expecting another run, and there it is. And we had a chance to stop it in the backfield. Another broken tackle, and they are off to the races. He's got a convoy, and it's into the end zone. 113 rushing yards on two drives already in this first quarter for San Diego State. That is not what we wanted to see. I think the goal now, we've got one first down. Let's try to make it two in one drive. We're going to run an option. Let Cordell Carroll keep it. I know he fumbled it on the sack, but he picked up six yards. Maybe shouldn't have taken that hit, though. Second and four, we've proven to the Aztecs that we are not going to be capable of throwing the football, but we'll see how much they respect that. On the counter, a block picked up. Steven Mark back in the game. And two first names picks up his second first down of the game. Man, if we could pick up another one, we could really build some momentum here near the end of the first quarter. Little play action pass. A is open over the middle, and it's the first pass completed on the season. Matt Pennington, the walk-on, able to grab that one in for 12. Just like that, it looks like we got a little bit of life brewing. Mark still in. Little the fullback here to block as we're going to go dive up the middle. Blocking is honestly pretty solid, except I ran into the offensive line there. Still picking up four. As we come to the end of this first quarter, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. One, what team do you think is going to be better first? Is it going to be the air raid, aggressive on defense, focusing on the pass, Washington State Cougars, or is it going to be these Oregon State Beavers? We're focused on the run here, both on offense and defense. If we can stop the run and we can run just controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, I think we'll be in a good spot. But I want to hear what you guys think is going to be better, at least first. Uh, that's a pass. I threw that to B. Looked like it went to X. We're lucky it's not picked off. So it's third and six now as Cordell just kind of chucked that one into the ether and hoped for the best. It didn't work all that well. Pressure coming on the mid-screen. We've got Franklin, and he's going to get two yards, but it's not enough. We are right at midfield. Fourth and four. We're going to go. I think I would be foolish not to go for this. Plus territory. We know we can't punt. We know we don't have a defense. We got to try to score some points somehow. And on fourth and four, it's a read option. Handing it off to Steven Mark. And he's got the first down falling forward, moving the sticks. And somehow the drive stays alive. I hope they don't look at that as we are in the Wildcat with Novak. Uh, Salam coming in. If he can get ahead of steam going, he, he can really get moving. But Osita just not fast enough. You know, sometimes you just got to see what works. You never know. Maybe a play like that goes for a touchdown. Maybe it doesn't. Novak in for the halfback. Slip screen. Carroll. The big question is, can he get it to him? He's got some blockers in front of him. Not enough, though. The Juke absolutely <laughs> destroyed the defensive back, but he only got three yards out of the play. Man, it's good to be back. Third and eight. We are five wide. Look into the air here. We're going to look maybe to go back to Novak on this one. The question is, can Carroll find somebody downfield? Is anybody going to be open? Why is open? Novak, can he get there? He does. Catches it in stride. Immediately gets hit, but holds on through the contact. Four of six through the air for Cordell Carroll. That is much better than I expected as Mark comes in, picks up three yards on first down, and we are inching closer to the end zone. Wondering if those couple of completed passes maybe are making San Diego State rethink what they know about this offense as we are going to put a couple of backs in the backfield and Davis is going to pick up three. 
One more of those and we might be in the red zone. Hoping for the best, struggling to remember what buttons to press, expecting the pressure to come, and we just get rid of it. But Young's wide open, burned his man. They pressed him at the line. And that's Taj Little. Wait, was that really the fullback? No, it was Young, but they're saying that because he's coming at quarterback. I think that we already have an injury, and our fullback is now our quarterback. We're in trouble. It's a read option, but because it's a fullback, we're not as worried about it. First and goal for the first time this season. Young's going to keep it. His first play into the game. That was just bad running for me. We did get positive yards, though. Elbow bursitis for Cordell Carroll, so he will be back in soon. That is great news. Gosh, could you imagine a season-ending injury, what that would do? We already are so weak for that to happen again as Novak just gets stuffed trying to run it up the middle. Third and goal. You know, we're taking points if, it, if we don't score here. And, you know, I don't really want to risk injuring Cordell here, but we got to do it because this is our best chance to score that we might see all game. So Carroll comes back in. At the QB spot midway through the second quarter. We'll see what kind of throws he can make. Eh, nothing's open. And both of our receivers just kind of ran into each other. I didn't feel comfortable sitting in the pocket there. And we're just going to see what we can do. Trying to boot this one up and through for our first points of the season. Newman gets it up. Looked like he would have been good for a couple more yards out. But uh, didn't instill a lot of confidence. Still though, we drill it through the middle. And we are on the board. No shutout in San Diego today. And honestly, a decent little kickoff there. Pinning them down at the three and a half. They're going to return it. And the tackling leaves a little bit to be desired. But, you know, you love to see that. This is the best starting field position for the defense all game. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see these guys go to the air. And they do so, it looks like. Over the middle, Harvey. Oh, that's just bad coverage. She's so slow, but he dropped it. Oh, the first pass attempt there from Aiden, and his man can't hold on to it. Wide open, and we just got bailed out. Harvey with the slow change of direction there was pretty difficult. I'm expecting a run on second and 10. No, they're five wide. There's guys open all over the field. He's going to catch it. Harris, I don't know what just happened there, but we forced him out of bounds. And on third and three, a chance to get the stop and get the defense off the field. We are bringing pressure. We're calling this one a run. We're going to try to jump the snap. It's an option. Quarterback all the time in the world. He runs into a man, and he just picks up the first down. Oh, we almost had him. That is a demoralizing play there for the defense as uh, De Los Reyes just picks up 54 yards. Burned his man. Beautiful pass. Beautiful catch. And it's first and goal. It's just like that. And there's just nothing that we could do there. Expecting a run here. As they actually step back to pass. And look at that. It's Darius De Los Reyes. Seven yards. They go back to him. And he gets the touchdown. Just like that. It's 21-3. Gosh. That happens quick when they score. Everything falls apart in a hurry. Osita Salam back to return his fourth kick of the game. And he's made a couple of guys miss. And he's starting to build up ahead of Steed. 29 yards. That's the best so far. Here's the problem. 58 seconds left in the half. We're going to have to be airing this one out. Cordell looking for something. Looking just to keep the ball in a catchable position. We find Mark. Easy little pitch and catch, and Steven steps out of bounds. So a surprising 6 of 9 through the air. Pretty nice as we have 52 seconds to work with. Second and 2, stepping back. Throwing a risky one, and ooh, the running back drops it and is almost picked up on the, on the tip drill there. And we might be 6 of 10 now passing, but we are 2 of 6 on our third down conversions. Maybe expecting a little bit of pressure. Rushing four, no time to do anything. B was open. I threw it late. Franklin, it's picked off. I accidentally moved him out of the way. And that's just my uh, lack of playing time recently coming into factor right there. Just not smooth on the sticks yet, as I'm pretty sure that the kids would say these days. And now 43 seconds. And it's San Diego State with a great chance to score. They're going to throw it over the middle. I don't know how he came down with that. He breaks a tackle. He's going to break another and shrug him off out of bounds. Mecky shot 25 yards, 36 seconds. San Diego State's looking to score and get the ball back in the third quarter. You know, the worst part about all this is, and I'm pretty sure that even if we did stop them at some point, I don't think it's going to matter. And even if we get into a position where we maybe could get an interception, that's also not going to matter because we are for sure dropping it. Quarterback's putting me on skates, and he's going to score. Oh, no. Not like this. That is so embarrassing. First game back, and I've given up touchdown runs like that. 
Oh, this is not the goon of old. Now that was worst case scenario. 28 to three, just like that. Oh, brother, we are getting our butts whipped. That is the nice way of saying that. Salam, he's doing all right. Osita, we're starting to figure out how to use him here. Really, all I'm praying for is that we don't give up another touchdown before the half. 21 seconds, all of our timeouts. I got to air it out. I'm not coming out to lose the football game. As we find Steven Mark, and we're going to take a timeout. In my eyes, if you're not going to go for a touchdown when you're holding the ball, doesn't matter how little time you have, you're just a coward. Don't take the coward's way out. Throw a four verts instead. This one's probably picked off. Oh, uh, Salam. It's too far downfield. Oh, he couldn't reel it in off the tip. He had all the space in the world. If he was able to get that, that would have been a touchdown. The hands just are not quite there. We're going to step back looking to pass once again and just trying to get the first down. Oh, my gosh. We threw it a mile behind him. Fourth and one. Five seconds left. We are going to just chuck one up here. You know, I don't think that much good can happen, but I don't even think Carroll can get it there. But we're going to give it a shot anyway. Trying to get it off. He gets hit as he's throwing. Plenty of bodies in the area, and it harmlessly hits the turf. Oh, man. 28-3. to three. Down just a, a huge quarter of a century here as we walk into the locker rooms. It's definitely not going to be good vibes, but things could be worse is the way I'm seeing this. We have only had one minor injury. We have scored points. We've shown that the offense can do something. It's not the worst team in the world either that we're playing against. This is what were they, 83 overall or something like that? If we could come out and show out like this against an FCS team, we might actually stand a chance of competing for the entire game. That's all that we're hoping for. So let's just come out in the second half, try to have some fun, and see if we can't find the end zone just for a little confidence boost. Obviously, we're not going to win this game, so let's just go to Old Faithful here. Let's try a, an onside kick, and well, we're not going to recover it, but it was worth a shot. You never know. We could steal a possession. It is very unlikely that that's going to happen, uh, but I still got to give it a shot. They are stepping back, probably to pass. They put the tight end in motion. Baker, we'll see what we can do. It is a pass. Waiting, waiting. Quarterback has some pressure, but it's Shaw wide open. And Shaw has had a, just a great, great uh, kind of middle half of the game here. I honestly didn't hate much of that play. Uh, it didn't have the result that we wanted, but could have been a lot worse. First and 10, they're going to run this one. And the blocking is phenomenal. A huge hole up the middle as Keenan Kristen gets nine yards for him. And this second one, I'm fully expecting a run. They're bringing a lot of guys here. We've been seeing a lot of options. They do hand it off. Brion Penny, interesting name. He picks up more than one, though. No reason to really be trying anything complicated. We're just going to try to stop this. Trying to contain the edge. Thomas, we're getting stiff-armed. Keenan Kristen is not scoring, so it's a positive. And I am just having a really hard time figuring out exactly what these guys are going to do on a play-to-play -play basis. It feels like they just kind of start to run a ton and then they start to pass a ton. They're not really balanced. They pick one and stick with it until it stops worth it. And, and there, we get a great stop on Penny as he loses too. So I don't know if you would have believed it if I said it was going to happen, but we have a third and seven and a chance to maybe do something trying to stop these guys in the red zone. Wide open, wide open. Redmond is gone. Nobody in the area couldn't even think about what he was doing. Our brains are working a little bit slow. It's not even the best pass, but they score anyways. So we're back to square one with the offense. Long field to work with, and we're just going to try to be methodical. Try to keep it smart. Try not to get desperate as Mark. He, I, uh, we cut way further outside than anticipated. It almost worked. Still able to pick up a yard. It looks like they want to bring pressure here. We're just going to hope for the best here. See what we can do with Novak. Move him over. And run it up the middle. Mark, plenty of space and a blocker downfield. And Mark with the biggest run of the season so far. 15 yards. My goodness. I tasted freedom for a second and got a little too excited. They are going to be talking about that one on campus for a while. We've got a first and 10 at midfield. Looking to go to the air. Carroll finds Novak over the middle. So we are second in inches and we are... Maybe looking at a scoring opportunity if we can keep this up for a few more plays. Handing it off up the middle. Plenty of time. They were frozen. Novak with a one hell of a move. The juke into the spin, and he's got 13 on the ground. 
I don't know. Maybe it's because we're playing against the third or fourth string of San Diego State at this point, but the offensive line has given us a lot to work with. Uh, although maybe there it goes as Josh Davis, the third string running back, just gets walloped in the backfield. He has not had a lot of carries, and maybe that's for good reason. Steven Mark coming back in, second and 13. We're looking at a slip screen. They're covering this pretty dang well. If he could have made one man miss, maybe we could have done something with that, but it's at least a positive yard. Now here is where a lesser coach maybe would tell you to air it out, but that's not what we're looking for. It's time to put it on the ground. Give it to Davis. See if he can get positive yards on one of these plays for us on third and 11. He's got a little bit of space. And he's not picking up 13. I'll tell you that much. It's fourth and nine. Honestly, I was contemplating it going for this, but I got to figure out we're in middle of the field. We're going to take a timeout and kick this one. It is a 43 yarder with a kicker that we don't know what his range is. So he's made one from 25. I got to give him the opportunity. We got all of it. It's up. It's straight. And it's good. 45. That is some nasty range to have for the walk-on kicker. We are back on the board. 35 to 6. That is an absolute thing of beauty. I did not expect it to go that well. As we will just hope to contain them on the kickoff here. And... Okay. Ah, oh, man, I got to hold my breath every time that happens, though. Now, once again, as we enter into this new dynasty, I am curious to know, you know, what have you guys missed from the Gray Boys of the Teal Boys? What were your favorite memories from those videos? De Los Reyes is probably going to get the ball here on the option. No, quarterback gets hit. He hurdles a man after staying up, and he's got a blocker and a convoy. Sandy running down the field, dives, can't get him. The shoestring tackle misses it just like that. Jalen Maiden 70 yards into the end zone for the touchdown, and it's 42-6. to six. What a brutal way to come back into play in this game, huh? They are baptizing me with fire at the moment as Salam can't quite... Well, he got a couple of blocks down the sideline. He goes almost getting to the 40. We've got good field position and maybe a chance to get to double digits in this game. There's a minute and four left in this third quarter. And who knows? Maybe we can get the running game going like it was at the start of the drive. Blocking looks okay up the middle as... Man, they plugged the gap, but Stephen Mark just trucked a man. Laying on the horn on that one. We've got a second and four now inside a minute here. Snapping it, handing it off. Mark picks up a block, cuts it upfield, and it's third and one. Well, I might be trying to kill all of our positive momentum here, but we're going to try a little swing screen on third and one. Oh, God. We are lucky that didn't get picked off. I don't even know how Jermaine Miller caught it. We lost the yard. It's fourth and two. We're going to let this go into the fourth quarter and then go for it. Down 42 to six to start this fourth quarter. It's fourth and two. Going back to the option. See, I'm willing to put uh, Carroll's body on the line in those important moments. And Stephen Mark, gosh. They weren't ready for that, apparently. Just absolutely obliterated. So first down, we're back in Aztec's territory. But this is usually where it starts to stall out. First down, we're looking to pass. B is open over the middle. It's Franklin. He can't hold on. Oh, my gosh. We just witnessed a murder. That was one of the most brutal things I've ever seen. They know the, the run's coming now. We know that the run's coming now. Novak still uh, gets stood up in the gap. Picked up three, which is positive, but he was close to breaking free there. The way I see it, two of 10 on third downs means that we've gotten a solid amount of first down conversions off of fourth downs. So uh, we're going to just run it. We've got two plays to work with. On the counter, Davis dragged down immediately. Josh Davis has not had a good go of things today. So now it's 4th and 10, and I'm going for it just for the sake of pride, seeing if we can do anything. A over the middle is not open. That's picked off. That was such an awful throw. The slowest tight end you've ever seen. And not only is it picked off, it's going to be a pick six. No! There's a flag down. Almost certainly this is coming back for a clipping. Oh, never have I been more happy to see the refs in my life. So we will not give up the pick six. We will still give up the football, but it was fourth down anyways. So that could have been a lot worse than it ended up. The key question is here, are they going to run the football? They should. If they were kind, they would just run it as we swallowed them up in the backfield and lost a two on the play, and the defense swarmed to the football. 
We have been running a lot of zone coverage on this game. We're going to switch that for the rest of this to some man. Kind of see what happens there. Thomas outside. It is an option. Quarterback's keeping it. We hit him. He breaks it. He almost breaks another one. Looked like it was the game was going to let him pass no matter what there. And I don't even think I would have been mad if, if he did throw it past the line of scrimmage. That would have just been fun to watch. Third and one. Calling this a run. Feels like it's going to be a run. They hand it off up the middle. It is a run. And he got past the line of scrimmage, got the forward progress, and then we pushed him backwards. It almost feels like we do worse when we blitz. I wonder, we're just so bad at block shedding. Is it causing us problems when we get engaged with those linemen? It almost works better when we just wait. Right here, quarterback actually gets pulled down. I'm so used to Maiden just breaking tackle after tackle. Now that's a surprise. So a couple of tackles for loss on this drive so far makes me a little bit confident. See if we can get the away fans to get hyped up as they're going to let the clock burn down here. And we'll see if we can get the stop at all. Uh, there's a man open. Missed tackle. And he stumbles forward. Ugh, it hurts so much. <laughs> Something where can't even really coach it as they are in clock burn mode which to me says let's just bring the pressure they they shouldn't be passing the football if they are kind uh what they could do though is still score very easily hard to tell your running back not to take it in when he's got 41 yards of open space in front of him and this just is looking worse and worse as the seconds tick by so with 215 left in this one we're pretty much just going to run the clock out. Let's go home. We're battered. We're bruised. We got our tail between our legs. Uh, we, actually, I don't know if that's possible for a beaver. It's a pretty big tail. Uh, pretty small legs. But regardless, two minutes left. We'll see maybe if we can pull off some sort of miracle play. But we don't want to give up the ball. We just want to get out of here without any injuries. And I am hoping, maybe even praying that the first game for Wazoo goes a little bit better. Minute and 33. Mark with a decent run. Can he get to the corner? He can. He's going to step out of bounds, but it's 11 yards and our 10th first down of the game. So one other thing that will really set the two teams in this dynasty apart is each coach is starting from level one. So depending on how we play in the game, depending on how we level each coach up, things could change very rapidly. One coach could become a lot better than the other. And once push comes to shove, that could completely change which team ends up, you know, winning a national championship versus, you know, maybe staying down in the gutter. As we let the clock wind down, though, on this first game of our last dynasty ever in NCAA 14, we're going to take it and we're just going to throw one deep for old time's sake. And Franklin Jr., well, he couldn't even get under it. I don't even know if he knew the ball was in the air. Cordell Carroll, Cordell Carroll, gosh, his name is hard for me to say. That's a tongue twister. Ends, what was that, 10 to 21 through the air? Could have been better, could have been a lot worse. And at the end of this one, we're feeling all right. The thing, we, we scored points. That's the big thing. Uh, You know, we gave up a lot, a lot more than we scored. We lost the game, but we got to start somewhere and getting a couple of field goals and seeing what we have with this kicker is really, really useful. I think 45 yard field goal is so massive to know that we have that range means we're going to be able to score a lot more points than people are expecting us to get so as we finish our first game and fall to 0-1 with the beavers we're going to call it for this episode we will play the first game with washington state maybe the second game with oregon state uh on our next episode if you like this one if you like the concept if you're happy that it's goon in time again and i am back let me know down in the comments and please if you're not already subscribe again the more support that these videos get the easier it's going to be for me to shed my other responsibilities in life and sit down at the desk and get these recorded but i am so excited and honestly a little bit sad there is a huge chunk of my life that has been dedicated to playing this game and it feels a little bittersweet for this to be the beginning of the end but i'm glad to be able to share it with you guys and you know this is the start of us going into bigger and better and newer things and i'm glad that you guys are able to be here with me but with all that being said again thank you guys so much for watching my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Cougs. You guys are the Beeves. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.